everyone. We'll give everyone a couple minutes to join. Thank you for joining us today. So welcome. This is our second virtual Talk About It small group workshop. We're very excited to have Dr. Edison here from Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Um, before we get started, I did want to go over a few things. Um, I, if you could stay muted throughout the presentation, there will be a uh, time for Q&A. Um, if you'd like to, there's a little raise your hand function. There's also the chat function that you can use to type a question if you have it in your mind and you don't want to forget and then we can get to it later. Um, and this session will be recorded. We're going to have it available. Uh, we'll send it out in an email. We'll also have it available on the BCHD website um, where you register for this event. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Edison. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, thank you uh, to uh, Tessa and to BC's Health District um, uh, for having me and, and for Alan for uh, Positive Coaching Alliance for um, helping to put this together. Um, so, did we did we want to do introductions at all for the participants or no, Tessa? Um, I think that we could just do that at the end during the Q and A. Perfect. So we can when they you get ask questions. questions, excellent. Okay. So, my name is uh, Bianca Edison. I am a, a pediatric sports medicine and orthopedic physician at um, sports medicine program at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Uh, and today we are going to talk about um, how to kind of come together uh, and the um, concept of physical activity, especially during this time um, of the pandemic. So I'm going to um, go through slides and during different portions, if anyone has any pressing questions, um, we can, you know, pause uh, and then I'll certainly leave time for um, Q&A at the end. Okay, let's see here. Here we go. So uh, why do we participate in sports? Um, sports offers a various array of um, positive uh, things to our life. Uh, one is strictly from a cognitive and a um, mental perspective. And so this um, schematic just shows that uh, um, a view of the brain's activity. And here on your left, uh, this is the brain and kind of that those connections with the small neurons in the brain after just sitting quietly. Um, but just after a 20 minute brisk walk, we already start to fire um, pretty uh, robustly uh, in the brain. And there have been several studies that show that kids and adults who participate in physical activity on a regular basis uh, actually do better um, with certain cognitive and neurocognitive uh, tests. And this, I feel like, is a really great overview of all the benefits uh, that physical activity and sports participation um, can contribute uh, to us. It's not just merely from a physical aspect uh, in that, yes, um, participating uh, in sports and physical activity on a regular basis um, helps to reduce our risks of a lot of chronic diseases when we get older, such as heart disease and, and diabetes. Um, but more than that, it helps us, like I said, cognitively, that those um, children who participate in sports, they um, tend to score up to 40% higher on um, tests. They're more likely to go to college. Um, they're more productive at work. Um, they have uh, potential higher uh, annual earnings. There was a great um, study that looked at uh, all the females in C-suites uh, in Fortune uh, 500 companies and showed that up to 80% of those individuals uh, played high school sports. Um, so, and it's an intergenerational cycle that those kids who um, have more active um, 
have active parents are more likely to be active themselves. So um, the cycle just continues and it just helps us um, overall and helps um, generations uh, to come. So how much activity do we need? Uh, the um, CDC and the American Academy uh, of Pediatrics, um, as well as um, the uh, Academy of Internal Medicine shows that for um, kids and teenagers, about 60 minutes a day of moderate um, intensity activity um, is really beneficial. And um, for adults, it's about 150 minutes a week. And in addition, um, to incorporate some muscle, muscle strengthening activity um, for that resistance um, to help. But what's happening now? Um, so from, um, for the first time um, in um, history, we're looking at this global ongoing pandemic um, for which we are finding out information kind of as we go along uh, with the COVID-19 um, virus. And um, it is affecting us uh, throughout the world. And right now, as of uh, today, we have a little bit over 4.3 million cases uh, globally. And um, now just over 300,000 um, deaths um, from this uh, virus and this disease, unfortunately. And uh, we are um, rapidly trying to put things in place, put protocols in place, uh, so that we can what we call flatten the curve um, and decrease the prevalence of this, um, as well as the morbidity and mortality um, from this virus. And with that uh, comes our social distancing, which then affects um, our sports. Um, you know, and for the first time since the concept uh, of organized sports, when it was broadly introduced to the world, we're now left on a global scale without practices, games, or team fellowship and sacrifice for a larger duty to health and safety. Uh, the um, California Commission of uh, Athletics just suspended NCAA competition for the fall. UCA, uh, USA Gymnastics um, has just canceled their national championship. Um, and all major events in 2020, uh, the first time doing this since 1942. Um, you know, we, we've noticed rec centers are closed and here in LA, about 42 of them are being converted into homeless shelters to help uh, that vulnerable population uh, during this pandemic. Um, we're no longer having uh, in-person school, uh, which thus affects our ability for our kids to participate in, in research, uh, recess and organized um, sports practices. Uh, but one, no, knowing what we went through um, before, just prior to this um, slide, physical activity um, can be argued that it's crucial at a time like this a time during which we need to quell feelings of anxiety and stress to come out on the other side of recovery from this pandemic. Um, and not only can exercise during this time help keep your body healthy and conditioned once it's time to resume and, and go back to practices and organized sports, but it can help our mental well-being and help the anxious part of our brains calm down and rest um, by really providing a meditative detour from, from the daily news um, and um, those streams and, and the glaring um, and really concerning data that's coming out. Um, and so, yes, um, the lights may be off in the gym and yes, the locks may be on um, the, the gates right now for our fields and, and our, our, um, our tennis courts. Uh, but we can still find ways to achieve strenuous physical activity together. Um, and without a large field, without a lot of equipment, um, and still help create a sense of connectedness within the family and within the community. Um, so over these next um, 
several minutes, I'm going to go over some really um, great resources that um, you and your families can access um, to help achieve some of those goals. So the first one, I'm going to go over kind of some resources for some of our younger kids and then move up um, to uh, our older uh, adolescents um, and uh, athletic population. So this website, uh, What Moms Love, is a really um, great website and a resource um, that um, includes some um, fantastic ideas for incorporating um, physical activity um, for our little ones and for the family indoors and outdoors. Um, and what it really focuses on is trying to create games that foster gross motor development functional skills um, while keeping them active. So a couple examples that I put up here includes the tape shape game. So in this, um, you would use uh, some painter's tape to put a variety of shapes, letters, numbers on the floor, and then have your child stand on their favorite one and then give instructions to them that lead them to their next destination. So for example, do a bear crawl to a square or hop like a frog to the T or run to the rectangle. Um, and it keeps them engaged um, and keeps it fun. Um, the, the next uh, picture in the middle um, is a penguin waddle. So you blow up a balloon, put it in between your kids' knees, and have them waddle across the room without dropping it. Um, and you can even challenge your older kids by having them um, do this around a few obstacles that you put around the house. Um, and uh, with that, if they drop it, then they have to start over. And um, once they get the hang of it, you can make teams and, and see who would do it the fastest. Um, and then the last picture there is more balloon tap. So hang a balloon by a string um, from your doorway. So it's just a few inches higher than, um, than what they can reach. And then challenge them to try and tap it with their hand. So it's building up their um, their eye-hand coordination, um, their skills for jumping and landing, and things like that while still um, making it fun and less of a chore. Um, an another uh, website is uh, Cosmic Kids Yoga. Um, so um, this website incorporates a lot of um, yoga sessions and really makes it fun for the kids um, where, and they incorporate different um, popular characters such as characters from Frozen um, or other movies. Uh, and I've tried this with my kids as well. It really keeps them engaged while promoting some flexibility, stretching, core strengthening uh, as well. So moving on to some of our older uh, kids and adolescents and then for the parents as well to do this, uh, incorporate it together as a family. So um, several um, organizations and companies are offering during this pandemic time a lot of free online fitness classes because they realize that um, a lot of the gyms are closed um, and accessing uh, these classes virtually is um, one of the few ways um, to be able to continue um, some of the training that you had done prior. And so um, Nike Training Club is one example. They let you download free 15, 30, 45 minute workouts um, that's designed by the Nike trainers. Um, and most of them are equipment free. Um, they um, provide uh, pictures and, and videos that explain how to do the exercises to include squats, uh, lunges and whatnot. Um, Core Power Yoga, um, is another organization that is offering free 30 and 60 minute classes um, while the studios are closed. Um, Strong by Zumba, um, the, on this um, web channel, you can access free interval training exercises on YouTube. Um, and they also, what's interesting is they also have um, what's called Zumbini. Um, so they offer parent and me um, fitness activity classes um, for parents with, with younger children. And uh, they also offer those classes um, in other languages other than English, which is great. Uh, so one other thing to um, take in mind is that 
Um, you don't need um, all the equipment like this gentleman here, the dumbbells and whatnot. You can um, think creatively, use some things around the house if you don't have access to those to still help you move. Um, so using canned goods to replace light weights um, or using your body weight as resistance when you're doing push-ups or squats um, can be really easy substitutes. Uh, if you don't have a yoga mat at home, you can put um, one or a couple soft towels um, for padding um, and that can provide you for enough cushion on, on a hard floor. So um, Tabata, if, um, for those people who don't um, or aren't familiar with um, Tabata, this is a type of workout that offers more interval vigorous activity training um, in between sets and individuals can adjust the timing and intensity of those. Um, and um, these are meant to kind of increase, do activities to increase your heart rate um, uh, and on a smaller um, period of time um, to strengthen the body, um, but also get your heart rate pumping um, to improve overall fitness um, and conditioning. And so um, Open Phys Ed um, website has a bunch of these available um, and they offer good videos to show um, the form for them um, and really great mixed routines um, or um, focus routines where you're only working on legs or only working on core or planks. Um, but another really great um, option to do, especially if you're tight on time or if you just need a small break to get the family kind of re-engaged um, if people are um, getting antsy because they've gone through several conference um, calls with the company or the kids are getting antsy during their Zoom school, you can take four minutes do this all together and then get, again, get those neurons um, firing again in the brain and get you focused to go back. Um, so for those athletes, um, you know, this time can be really hard um, because you're, you've been playing and participating with your team um, practices multiple times a week and for this to suddenly stop so abruptly, um, it can be hard um, for our, our young athletes. Um, and so some um, organizations have really um, stepped up and um, provided some opportunities to keep those um, athletes engaged and um, opportunities to work on their skills, but while at home um, or while inside. And um, so, uh, Go Noodle has partnered with several sports athletes to offer in-home workouts, um, such as this circuit workout with NFL Play 60 and Ryan Kerrigan from the Washington Redskins um, on the, or um, a peer skills-based fast, fast feet workout um, with um, Madison Keys. So again, it offers them the opportunity to connect and engage um, with some elite athletes while still working on their sports specific skills. Uh, as part of um, MBA Together, Junior MBA at Home was, la was launched, um, which is an interactive content series providing basketball skills, um, such as the one, two, three, skip, dribble, drill with Reggie Jackson of the LA Clippers. Um, and um, What's great is that all of these um, include our elite athletes and they're also using um, a confined space um, or um, inside at home so that um, our young players realize that they too can do that and not um, feeling constrained. Um, so players from the NBA, WNBA, junior NBA provide these drills and activities and instruction um, to provide skill development, physical activity, um, even character development, um, which is really great. Um, MLB, um, Play Ball at Home, and the Dodgers RBI um, also are offering um, some accessible uh, interactive sessions um, to do where they can work on, these players can work on their skills. Uh, I think one thing um, to um, realize is 
the importance of um, connectedness. Um, and so um, players um, and um, coaches have been able to come together on shared uh, Zoom sessions to um, continue to work out um, as a team um, so they don't lose that um, sense of belonging uh, within the team. Uh, other creative things that you can do at home um, for sports uh, skills development, you can create an agility letter with some string or chalk. Um, and for lacrosse, you can play wall ball, shooting, passing, catching um, without needing a partner. You can practice with a parent. Uh, I think one silver lining of, um, of this is that, you know, youth sports um, participation has become incredibly competitive, um, which can also create um, some stresses um, for those young players. And so, yes, um, it's hard um, not to be able to go to practice um, right now or participate in games, but they can take the opportunity during this time and really play their sport on their own terms. Uh, without the pressure of competition and instead basing their participation on the joy and the, and of the essence of the game and the sport itself. Um, and one other great thing about that has come out from this is it has offered opportunities for families um, to engage in free play. And that unstructured time to be active and engage in free play can help encourage physical literacy skills and really enable the child to creatively direct how to engage actively with their environment. Um, and um, it makes activity fun, uh, reinforces basic skills um, that kids can work on that they'll, they'll use later for when they do participate in more competitive sports. So you can have an impromptu dance party Come together at home. You can have a family soccer um, pickup game. You can create a nature-based scavenger hunt or obstacle course, um, helping to work out in, um, in, and plant in the garden, um, climbing, hiking, um, you know, family walks are all really fantastic ways um, to come together as a family um, and work out um, together um, and just um, be strong and healthy together. So one opportunity that's coming up very soon um, for our families is this Saturday. So May 16th um, in the morning, uh, you and your families can um, join the CHLA community um, for our, our annual Walk and Play LA as to stay active and really support the hospital's mission on um, building healthier futures for all of our patients in all of our communities. And um, this week leading up to the event on Saturday, several of our community partners to include Barry's Boot Camp, um, the LA Galaxy Foundation, uh, the LA Kings, and the LA Chargers are all hosting online clinics um, that you can access and participate in um, from home as well. It's free to register and participate. So hopefully um, we can see a lot of you guys um, on Saturday morning. Um, one other thing I want to kind of highlight um, with uh, this time is that this is hard. Um, I know I've, I've experienced um, a lot of challenges during this time um, emotionally. Um, I think that all of us, have, we were on, you know, going through our lives and um, we're suddenly thrust into something very different. Our lives were kind of turned upside down uh, and um, that can be difficult. Um, and for some of our um, young children or even our adolescents or young adults, um, sometimes it can be hard to put words to that or um, communicate how they're feeling. Um, and, you know, to be able to participate in organized sports and have a competition that you were working so hard for and to suddenly have that be canceled um, can cause a lot of feelings of um, sadness, um, anxiety, um, and just acknowledging those 
um, validating those feelings, helping to discuss them um, with your child and um, can still um, provide opportunities to um, be together um, and strategize on ways to address that um, or to um, think about ways to still feel connected to that particular sport for which they, um, they're they sad about not being able to participate in in person. Um, so again, like I talked about the um, Zoom um, meetings with um, their team members or with their coaches, um, you could have virtual check-ins, you can create online leaderboards for family workouts, um, those sort of things. Uh, one of my um, colleagues in sports psychology um, really highlights the importance of positive imagery, which are exercises that individuals and athletes can do where they sit in a quiet room and they imagine themselves um, practicing, they imagine themselves um, competing and doing well. Um, it can really help to boost spirits um, as well. But all of this helps to nurture um, mental wellness. Um, and in addition, it's important to really focus on um, the small um, wins um, during this time and that, you know, yes, I know that you weren't able to participate in the regional competition right now, but hey, we're still being active. We're still working on being strong um, and I'm here for you, you know, um, those sort of things can really carry a lot of weight um, with our youngsters who are going through um, these times and, and be honest. Um, opening up to them and letting them know that, yes, I'm having um, some difficulties with that too, um, can create a, a, a real safe space um, for them to talk about um, the concerns that they have. So all of this um, that we talked about, I, I think really highlights um, a great message that the Positive Coaching Alliance um, is disseminating to our community that overall um, organized sports may not be going on right now, but hey, you know what? Life is a team sport. And um, I think there is some solace in knowing that we all are going through this um, together. And so there is uh, opportunity for shared um, understanding and shared empathy and to really come together as a community um, and know that um, we can come together to, to get through this. Uh, and um, as a family, it's important that um, you as parents are really kind of stepping in um, and um, to all of these different roles um, that um, are now being thrust at you. You're not your you're parent, but you're also kind of a teacher right now as, as school is you know, being conducted at home. You're a coach right now to help. And so looking at um, how we can um, put these things together, work together as a family, work together as a community, uh, and um, help get through this time, I think is really important. Uh, the Pausing Coaches a Coaching Alliance um, is offering some really great online um, digital resources um, for the community during this time. Um, their Triple Impact Competitor course um, for youth athletes is now being offered for free. Um, it's a highly interactive course. It provides some specific tips um, and techniques um, for our young athletes um, for mastery and improvement in any of the sports um, that they participate in. There are also online um, parent courses and online courses um, for coaches as well. So I really um, would encourage you guys to go to their website. Um, there's some really great things. There's some great talks um, that they have facilitated um, with some of our elite and professional coaches, as well as other PCA board members on um, various topics that are pertinent to this time. 
So there is one thing that um, I would like to highlight um, during this time um, that is a great supplement um, that people can take to help um, just maintain proper and optimal performance um, during the pandemic. And I'll let you guys think about it um, for a couple minutes on what you might think that would be. I'll give you a hint, it's completely free. Um, you don't have to go to a GNC to get it, um, but it really can enhance someone's performance cognitively and physically. What is it? Sleep. Um, I really wish I could um, sleep as great as this little one here. Um, but it, it really is something that um, I say is important, um, especially during this time. Um, rest is a really key component um, to um, a one's daily activity regimen. And maintaining a proper sleep schedule um, allows the body time off from the um, training or activity that you might be doing during the day, but it helps the body heal, it helps the body rejuvenate, um, and it helps um, everybody show up each day um, ready to take on the challenges ahead. Um, there are a lot of um, uh, recommendations that come out, and the most important one is um, from um, uh, the National Sleep Foundation. And, um, and it's a really great schematic to reference in terms of ideal hours of sleep. Um, and I'd say, you know, here it's important um, to look at. Um, this is kind of our target range um, for our individuals. And I would also stress it's not just a number. Um, that we want to look at. And it really is quality sleep um, that we want to aim for. And, um, you know, we could lay in bed, yes, for um, nine, 10 hours. But if it's not restful sleep, if we're, if we're not going through those proper sleep cycles, um, then we won't um, be rested. We won't have achieved um, the rejuvenation that our body needed um, to move on to the next day. So I saw someone from the audience um, also commented about proper um, nutrition um, as well. And yes, and that goes hand in hand um, with also getting a proper sleep and performing well. Um, so what are the tips um, that we should um, utilize to sleep? Um, our, a lot of our pro athletes make this their top priority to achieve um, their utmost um, performance. Um, try not to exercise late at night. Um, when we do that, that hypes our brain up. Um, and then it takes a while um, for the brain and the body to settle down um, to really release those hormones that we need to start those sleep cycles. Um, it's also important not to ingest or consume any caffeine at least six hours prior to the target bedtime. Um, caffeine can linger in our bodies um, for about four to six hours, and that's another stimulant. Um, and so it really can hinder our ability to um, get proper sleep. Um, and then a really important thing is maintaining the same sleep cycle and sleep schedule. Even on the weekends, we, weekends cannot be used um, as a catch-up. Um, and so um, it's important, especially for our teenagers that right now they might think, oh, it's fine, I'll, I'll just stay up really late um, and then I'll sleep in um, at, at, on Sunday um, and then do the same thing going into the week that, that will really disrupt um, everything. Our bodies really like um, habit um, and routine. Uh, and so the more you can set uh, the same sort of routine um, for that, um, the better. And then screens can really also disrupt um, our sleep cycles. Um, that exposure to that um, light from the screen um, can also hype the brain up. It um, Then the body doesn't uh, realize that it's time to release um, those uh, hormones, um, which then disrupts our ability to, again, get into those sleep cycles. So you really want to avoid going on any screen at least an hour prior to that target bedtime. 
Um, so during all this, we really want to adopt um, a kind of smart approach um, to maintaining physical activity um, during this pandemic. Um, and S, you want to set a regular schedule. Um, so the body expects um, some form of activity on a regular basis. Um, M, um, for our mental health, you want to meditate to combat um, those stresses that are coming um, during this challenging time. A, you want to allow for varied workouts. Um, you want to train and strengthen different parts of the body. Um, with that, it's also important to really listen to your body um, to avoid injury and not push yourself um, too much or go too hard. Um, a gradual um, ease or um, acceleration um, with that activity is also important. Um, R for rest, you wanna rest properly um, for rejuvenation to include sleep. Um, and T, taking advantage of this time um, to really be close to your family, connect um, and focus on what you can control um, and really focusing on, on those small positive wins um, can help. So with that, I'm going to um, stop and really open it up so we can engage um, in um, some Q&A here uh, and, uh, and chat. So I don't know, Tessa, if you received any questions during the time. You know, no, I didn't uh, receive any, but I was curious um, if, you know, if there's a way that you've seen that kids can play together a game on the, on Zoom or something, something like that. Mm. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. Um, there have been um, some um, challenges um, that I've seen um, that different teams have put up um, on Zoom. Um, so um, one was a um, uh, during Easter, they did a bunny hop challenge um, to see who could um, perform bunny hops during a particular time and who could last the longest with good form, those sort of things. Um, there can be uh, other ones like plank challenges to see who can uh, keep that. Um, so there are ways um, to do to do that um, in a group setting, and that way the kids can interact with each other a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Great. And then I see that um, Alan asked a question about how can we get our kids back to a regular schedule given home learning. Ah, so uh, just an overall regular schedule um, is a good question um, because it's hard, you know. Um, I think particularly for, for parents and, and for parents who are working, you're trying to juggle your demands of work and school um, and then trying to make sure that they, that the kids stay and you stay active. Um, I would say um, trying to adopt um, a similar schedule that you did as much as you can prior to um, the, the quarantine restrictions um, can be helpful. So that means, you know, the kids aren't sleeping in till 10, 10 or 11, um, that school starts. I mean, I, I still make my kids get dressed and get ready. Um, it's not, pajama, you know, an ongoing pajama day every day, you know. Um, and it, it helps to create um, a sense of structure. We come together for lunch. We, you know, um, and um, we we have time where we we all kind of take a break uh, and and do something together. Um, so, but it is challenging, you know. Um, I'd say, but the more structure you can help to provide um, to kids, I think it's helpful for them. Um, to have that routine, um, something that um, they don't have to um, navigate, but at the same time, allow yourself some flexibility because some things, some, some things may be changed. So you can't be too rigid where then it's harmful um, as well, so. Great, and then I see that Emerald submitted a question 
Um, a lot of the kids that I know are raised by their grandparents with limited mobility. You mentioned the What Moms Love blog. What are some ways they can stay active with their young ones and maintain structure? That's a great question. Um, so yes, um, uh, leaning in on um, our older generations to help as, as you work is, is key, is critical, you know. The, um, and so um, if grandparents can't, are not as mobile or, or because they have um, other chronic conditions that prevent them from going outside, um, things that they can do, um, you know, the kids can, can do a, a dance party inside um, and maybe the grandparent can be the DJ, you know, um, uh, or um, a grandparent can do seated things where they're holding two cans and they're doing kind of upper body uh, workouts. Um, they can do Simon Says where the grandparent is, is Simon and they're directing the kids to do different things. Um, so it's more creative, kind of fun um, things that they can do um, together um, for the older kids. Um, the grandparents can be more the resistance um, kind of um, stationary um, person. So they can hold the resistance band while the kid is doing some things instead of trying to tie it around um, a door handle or something like that, just to help engage and bring everybody together to participate together. Hi, Dr. Esson, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Uh, thank you. First of all, very informative and appreciate your time and, and, and Beach Cities for hosting this. Uh, my wife works on the front lines as a nurse at UCLA, as a nurse practitioner. Well, tell and her thank you. you. Of course, thank you. And, and we're just thankful that, you know, we just pray for every day. Um, anyways, I, I've been staying at home with, with my both my toddlers, a six-year-old and four-year-old boys. Um, and I appreciate the, the ideas that you gave today, especially the cosmic yoga because I'm trying to keep up with them, uh, <laughs> both on the frozen side with my, my youngest and then my oldest doing the Star Wars yoga. So okay. thanks, for, thanks, thanks for mentioning that. I think it's very important. I, I realize that I'm not as flexible as both my boys. Um, <laughs> but the question is more for adult fitness, Dr. Essen. Mm -hmm. uh, in regards to uh, pre-COVID, uh, I'm an avid gym goer uh, about three, four times a week. Um, but I have this anxiety as far as now when the gyms do reopen up, uh, in another month or two or however long that it's going to open. Um, what's your thoughts and your take on, you know, as far as getting back into a routine? And, and, and I, I've been reading online where gyms are going to be you know, from di different pieces of cardio piece of equipment. There's going to be some uh, uh, space in between. Uh, obviously, with the disinfectant, they're going to be closing gyms like er every hour. At least that's why I read on 24 Hour Fitness. So, again, mm -hmm. I just want to get your take and uh, your feedback on that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and so it's it's going to be a gradual process. Um, I think that there have been some great resources that come out um, in terms of gradual return um, to fitness, to sports. Um, uh, the Aspen Institute um, for Project Play, there's a really great resource. I don't know if I can still share my screen. If I can, I'll Yes, I can. So let me try and pull it up um, here for you. See if I have it. Let me stop this and then let's see. Um, pause share. Okay, let me see if I can do this really quickly. Um, find it. But there's a, there's a few great resources. Aspen Institute put one up um, and um, that goes over different levels of risk and based on that risk what you would do for that oh here it is let's see if i can do that here and share this again okay i think it's here here we go um so this um resource here um it goes over different categories again there's lowest risk medium risk high risk um and what you would do with that uh, and um, this risk assessment tool. Uh, and so, um, and it's, it separates it out based on um, different sports. Um, let me see if I can, 
here. So fitness and, and, um, and fun activities, um, what you would do if it's, um, you know, you want to really avoid any sort of risk of exposure, you're inside. Um, but um, group riding if is the highest risk and it goes over climbing, parkour, all of those. But I think, um, and, and the NCAA also put out a really great resource and document in terms of um, going back to sports teams and participation there. Uh, and um, the biggest thing is going to be going on the guidance of our local, our state, our, our federal um, agencies, and the CDC and Department of Public Health based on what's going on. Um, you know, right now we're, we're still at that, um, that risk zone where we're not opening up a whole lot. Um, as things improve, it's still going to be where we have to put in things in place where we're, we're masking up, we're really um, practicing good hygiene um, and hand washing, cleaning down equipment. Um, from a gym um, and a fitness center perspective, it's going to be looking at more so the shared equipment um, and how to um, minimize um, cross exposure with that. Um, and also um, maintaining proper distancing. So it might be where gyms are going to be um, going to more of a sign up or a reservation um, status at first, where they're only allowing a certain number of people to be within the gym to accommodate that social distancing. Um, and they're probably not going to to open up, you know, steam rooms and saunas and, and like that at first. Um, where people are, are just focusing on, on getting active um, instead. Thank you so much. Good answer. Absolutely. <laughs> You're awesome. Great. So I think we probably have time for one more question before we uh, wrap up the session. I saw that um, there's another, how can we tell if kids, especially in high school, are stressed but don't want to talk about it? Mm, that, that's, a great, that's a great question, Alan. Um, so there are a couple of things to look out for um, in terms of um, kids um, showing signs of stress, anxiety, even depression um, that you can pick up on. One is kind of losing joy for things um, or interest in regular activities. Um, so if they just prefer to stay in bed for a long period of time. They don't want to get out of bed. Um, their uh, eating habits might change. Um, those sort of things. They don't want to engage with um, friends. Um, those can be signs that they're experiencing um, some of these feelings. And the most important thing for that one is to uh, recognize it um, and talk about it. Um, if they don't want to talk about it with you, um, then um, see if they want to talk about it with a coach. Connect them with, with their coach um, or um, connect them with um, a different um, role model. Um, if, if it's of um, higher concern, then you really want to get them connected um, with a um, mental health uh, specialist. And there are a lot of mental health specialists that are doing telemedicine um, appointments and sessions these days um, where you don't have to go into the office physically. Um, but it's, it's something that we shouldn't ignore. Um, I think that it's something that people are definitely be are going to go through these emotions. All of us will, because this is such a time of such um, sudden change, abrupt change um, that we're not used to. And there's no particular end in sight. I think that's the other thing, um, where um, we're not really sure how this is gonna play out, or if we're ever going to get back to what we conceived as our normal life. There might be a completely different way that we're going to have to conduct um, and live our life, but not knowing the specifics can be really daunting um, and really anxiety provoking. Um, and so um, just sharing um, and uh, that you might be having some of those feelings, again, I think creates um, that shared space. Um, we, we are parents. Um, but at the same time, we don't 
have to show that we are immune to this. Um, we, we are not superheroes um, and it's completely okay to be down. It's a completely okay to go through these times um, because we are all human um, first and foremost. Um, and so um, communicating that to um, your child um, or if you're a coach, communicating that to, to, your, to your athletes, um, I think um, then shows to them that, that it's okay not to be okay. Thank you, Dr. Edison. That is very timely since May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So I think it's a great uh, suggestion to open the conversation and, and just be, be able to have a comfortable conversation with your children. Um, I did want to give everyone the opportunity just to ask any final questions. Um, but if we don't have any more questions and you come up with something Later, you can always send them to me. You should have my contact information um, in the uh, reminder email. Also, Dr. Edison did put her contact information up on the last slide. I yes. will share. Absolutely. If you guys, if 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 you guys don't realize or or know, um, Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, we do have a satellite clinic in your backyard down here in the South Bay, um, located in Torrance. Um, we're more than happy to um, see you guys um, or if there are concerns that are um, come up from a sports medicine an orthopedic standpoint um, we can see you in person we can do a telehealth appointment um, but or if you have any other just um, uh, general questions I did put my email um, in there on the last slide as well as the phone number to our office. So more than happy to discuss any issues or questions that you guys have. Great. And so we'll also be sharing that information um, with you all in our follow-up communication. I've also recorded this session and we're going to make that available on the BCHD website and as well as I'll provide that to um, Alan at PCA and Dr. Edison as well so everybody can um, watch this if they weren't able to attend. Um, but if we don't have any more questions, thank you again, Dr. Edison. This was really great. Thank you for everyone that was able to join us. And Alan from PCA, we're so grateful for all your great resources connecting us with people like Dr. Edison. And um, so we do have a series of these workshops uh, throughout this month and next. We have another one next week, Thursday, at one o'clock. It's a mindfulness-based session, um, and so if you're available, it's the registration is exactly the same place, bchd.org/talk. And I hope you all have a great day. Have a so. fantastic day and week, everyone. Dr. Edison. Hey, okay, thanks. Thank you.